All right, now that I have a way of calculating the velocity inside one layer, what I want to do is compare two different layers, A and B, let's say, where um, B is on top of A and moves in the rightward direction, and layer A is underneath and is being pulled by the shear stress in the opposite directions. So it's just one shear stress, but it's applying, because there's equal and opposite forces being applied here, um, layer a, a and B are being biased in the opposite direction. So B is being driven to run to the left and A is being driven to run to the right. Um, so this is my schematic and I'm sort of circling the two layers here. All right, so um, let's write out the velocity in those two adjacent layers. In the top layer, the shear stress is such that it's biasing things to move towards the right. Um, so I, you know, basically rightward movement, you know, you get a reduction in the total amount of energy and leftward movement um, within layer B gets, you know, the opposite treatment. Um, now, what I should do is subtract what's going on. I'm going to try and take the difference between what's going on in layer A, because eventually I want to take the derivative, and layer A is being biased in exactly the opposite way. Um, so in that layer, forward direction, forward hopping is biased, anti-biased, and, and vice versa. Um, I can, if I take the difference between those two things, I'll see that there's a hyperbolic sign or a cinch that I can combine out of there mathematically. Um, and so I can simplify that a little bit. And then the next thing I want to do is try to take um, a spatial derivative, dv dy. In order to take the spatial derivative, so I'm looking to take dvx dy, because that's how um, Newton's law shows up. In order to do that, I need to sort of draw a little picture here. Um, so I'm going to imagine those two layers that are b and a um, are separated by some amount of distance, so it's like a small distance. I don't exactly know how big it is. I'm going to, I'll call it uh, lambda 1. Um, to keep with some other literature that's out there. And so if I wanted to find the derivative dvx dy, I'll just take the, the difference that I have written above and I'll divide it by um, lambda 1. And then I'll apply that to the equation that I have that has the cinch in it. Um, but because it's a small, because we're taking a small distance, the cinch um, can actually, we, we'll just take the linear approximation of that and then the TA stuff all comes out um, as a linear component. You'll see that the KBTs cancel and um, good things happen. Now I can identify the constant proportionality between dVx dy and the shear stress and uh, so if I move things to the other side I can identify the viscosity. Um, so the viscosity basically you'll see depends as some prefactor um, that is essentially something that has the kind of size scale of what, like the one divided by the volume of one molecule um, times h bar h um, Planck's constant, but not the barred version, and then times um, what's called the Arrhenius um, term that basically goes exponentially, positive exponentially, um, with energy barrier divided by kBT.